Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News on LA56. A woman found dead inside a home ravaged by fire, and now we're learning code enforcement officers have checked out the same house several times because of its cluttered condition. A highly decorated U.S. general with ties to USC is killed during an insider attack in Afghanistan. Fifteen other coalition forces, including eight Americans, were wounded. A robber posing as a blind man before holding up a check cashing business at gunpoint. Good evening, I'm Colleen Sullivan. I'm David Ono. Welcome to Iowa News in LA 56. A devastating fire in Costa Mesa neighborhood. A woman is found dead inside her home that had been checked out by inspectors four times in six years. Orange County Bureau Chief Eileen Frere reports investigators are trying to figure out what sparked this fire. Firefighters hold up a tarp as the coroner removes the body of a woman in her 70s from the charred bedroom of this home in Costa Mesa. The dead bedroom definitely did have uh, pack rack conditions there, which made it challenging for them to try to do a, a mm -hmm. thorough search. Due to the amount of debris in there, I can't tell if she was on the floor or actually on a bed. The fire started around 6.30 this morning. I saw the smoke coming out of her uh, window, front window, and it was also coming up walked in over the back of the house. I called 911. Some neighbors say the fire doesn't surprise them, given what they call hoarder-like conditions. The weeds are 20 feet tall, and I've been worried that that house is going to burn down for 20 years because those weeds are right next to my house. The city says code enforcement has visited four times since 2008 for property-related complaints. Three citations were issued in 2013. They were dismissed after the property was cleaned up. Video from several months ago shows church volunteers helping out. The group brought together by a code enforcement officer trying to find a solution for the homeowner. Neighbors also say they tried to assist. We've all helped her off and on, but there was never any real appreciation. And you'd go over there to mow the lawn because it was so terrible. She wouldn't even come out and say thank you. Authorities say a man in his 30s or 40s who was staying in a tent in the backyard escaped with no injuries. Officials say he may have been a renter. Investigators are still trying to determine how the fire started. So far, the victim's name has not been released. Authorities say they're still trying to notify her relatives. In Costa Mesa, Eileen Frere, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Breaking news out of Port Washington, New York, where a home exploded, sending flames and smoke into the sky. One person is dead at the scene, and firefighters are searching for more possible victims. Home video shot by eyewitness Mike Dodona shows the fiery scene just behind Louie's Oyster Bar and Grill. Two neighboring homes and eight vehicles parked along the street also caught fire. The cause of the blast is under investigation. You saw as breaking news last night at 8 o'clock. Now an Arizona man has been booked on suspicion of attempted murder in that shooting on the 91 freeway. 32-year-old Jerry Valentin remains in custody. He is suspected of shooting another driver while they were on the freeway in Fullerton. The victim was hit in the upper body but managed to follow the suspect's car while calling 911. The CHP spotted Valentin in Anaheim Hills, spotted his car. They arrested him. They did not find a gun. Investigators say it may have been a case of road rage. The victim was hospitalized, but his injuries are not life-threatening. The L.A. County Board of Supervisors has voted down a controversial plan to create an oversight commission for the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. The community activists were there in downtown L.A. today to support the proposal. They want a commission to respond to their complaints about beatings inside the county jail and shootings involving sheriff's deputies. But the supervisors who voted three to two against the proposal say state law limits the power of any civilian board. And stopping crime and keeping us safe, two reasons millions will gather in communities across the country tonight. It's all part of National Night Out. Multiple events are happening across Southern California, including this one at the Greek Theater in Griffith Park. You're encouraged to turn in on your uh, front house lights and join members of your community to take a stand against crime. A U.S. general with ties to USC has been killed in a so-called insider attack in Afghanistan. Major General Harold Green attended USC where he received a Ph.D. as well as a master's degree. Green was on his first deployment to a war zone and was preparing Afghan forces for the time when U.S. coalition troops leave. A shooting rampage in Afghanistan. The gunman wearing an Afghan military uniform opened fire at a training facility in Kabul. There are a number of casualties as a result of the shooting, perhaps up to 15, to include some Americans. 
Many were seriously wounded. Others received only minor injuries. The assailant was killed. Major General Harold Green was killed in the attack. Green, seen here in this Army video discussing the changing strategies in the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. The general is the highest ranking U.S. Army officer to be killed in either wars. Steve Ganyard, retired Marine Corps colonel, believes the shooting was premeditated. Uh, they obviously picked out this general. It sounds like that there was a very senior Afghan uh, military official uh, also either killed or wounded as well. So very deliberate act. Uh, but it's going to break that bond of trust, which is so important in the training in environment. President Obama was briefed about the deadly shooting. The attack does not change the drawdown plan for the end of the year, where most U.S.-led coalition forces will leave Afghanistan. While we have made tremendous progress in disrupting, dismantling, and defeating al-Qaeda operations and leadership in Afghanistan, uh, and progress in winding down U.S. involvement in that conflict, uh, this shooting is, of course, a painful reminder of the service and sacrifice that our men and women in uniform make every day for this country. The attack is the latest in a string of so-called green-on-blue attacks in Afghanistan, where members of the Afghan forces have attacked U.S. and coalition forces. But those attacks have become less frequent recently, as fewer U.S. troops have been on the ground there. President Obama and Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel both spoke with General Joseph Dunford, the top U.S. general in Kabul, who said a joint U.S.-Afghan investigation was underway. The Taliban praised the gunman but did not claim responsibility for the attack. The three-day ceasefire in the Middle East is almost a day old, and so far the truce is holding. Palestinians in Gaza are trying to resume their lives. Israeli ground forces have completely withdrawn to their side of the border. Ceasefire talks will now get underway in Cairo, Egypt. Negotiators for both sides will try to agree on a long-lasting ceasefire. And now to the Ebola outbreak. A second American is now in Atlanta being treated for Ebola. Nancy Wrightbull arrived this morning. She and Kent Brantley are both at Emory University Hospital where they're being cared for in an isolated unit. They've both been given an experimental drug that seems to be working. Meantime, hospitals around the country are keeping an eye out for people with symptoms. A man is in isolation in New York City, and another man is being tested in Saudi Arabia. A jury convicts a fourth Marine accused of murdering a fellow sergeant and his wife during a home invasion near Marietta. 27-year-old Kishan Sykes was found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder. On Monday, a jury could sentence him to death for his role in the 2008 fatal shooting of a Marine sergeant and his wife. Three other Marines have been since convicted for their role in the robbery and murder. Two were sentenced to death. The third received two consecutive life sentences. A Long Beach man who emceed children's dance contests across the country has pleaded guilty to a federal charge of receipt of child pornography. Paul Michael Barber is also accused of planting a video camera in a dressing room at a dance contest at Cypress College. Police seized his computer and found more than 600 images and videos of child porn. Barber could be sentenced to 10 years in prison in October. Search is on for a robber pretending to be blind. A surveillance camera caught him. Authorities say the man robbed California budget finance in Wilmington July 24th. The suspect told the employee he lost his sight in the Iraq war and fumbled around as if he could not see. He befriended the employee for 90 minutes. She later opened the door to hand him a bottle of water, and that's when the robber revealed he wasn't blind, pulling a gun and demanding that she open the safe. People generally have a, a good place in their heart for people that are disabled. They want to help. And when something like this happens, it just it hardens them, and it makes them think twice next time when somebody actually does need help. So it's all around, it's, just, it's a bad crime. I want to find this guy. The robber got away with about $5,000 and did not harm anyone. A warm day, but certainly less humid. Let's check in with meteorologist Jonathan Novak. Uh, don't you love it? Yes. Fantastic living here in Southern California. All that shower activity that we were looking at over the weekend has moved all the way up to the north. As we look at that live Mega Doppler 7000 HD, we were dry today. It was beautiful, but we're going to talk in a minute. Some of this activity could roll back into the area tomorrow for some spots. Details in a few minutes on that, but for tomorrow morning... 65 to start you off. We do have the marine layer back in place at the beach. 
80 by noontime, which is cooler than normal. We have below average temperatures for tomorrow. I'll tell you more about all that rain in the north and where it's going and the temperature forecast because we will warm back up above average in that seven day. Details in a few minutes. All right, Jonathan, thank you. You're welcome. Repairs are underway after a 10 inch cast iron water main broke in Hyde Park. The pipe broke around 11 this morning at Hyde Park Boulevard and Van Ness Avenue. The break caused some flooding in the area and interrupted service to some 25 customers. VWP crews were already in the area working on other pipes, and they were there within minutes. Officials say the pipe that broke was installed in 1949. Crews aren't sure why the main broke, but say it's not related to the ongoing repairs in the area. UCLA students and staff now have access to their damaged vehicles. Nearly a thousand vehicles were trapped in two parking garages at UCLA when floodwaters from the broken water main rushed onto campus. 340 vehicles were towed to the Jackie Robinson Stadium parking lot. Insurance representatives are there for owners who want to file claims. It's completely totaled. The water looks like it was up over the dashboard, and when it gets there, all the electronics in the vehicle get fried, I've, I've been told. And I'm very grateful. Um, wasn't sure what was going to happen with my vehicle. I was on the upper level on the south end, but it turned out okay. A little damp, but it should be just fine. Vehicles will be at the location until Friday. The LA DWP says it is taking full responsibility for the damaged vehicles. Wow. Well, a life or death rescue in the waters off Hawaii. The incredible video up next. Plus, imagine looking out your window and seeing this fighter jet suddenly escorting your plane. What happened next? And a bizarre biting incident leads to a Cherry Valley woman losing her pet. That pet, a monkey, and it wasn't the only one she had. Details straight ahead. Steven Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey together again for a new movie. I'm George Pinocchio. That's in tonight's Hollywood Wrap. Plus, fun news for Facts of Life fans and the plan to tear down a local landmark on the Sunset Strip next. A white knuckle moment on board a passenger plane. A fighter jet had to escort the airline to the nearest airport. It was triggered by a mysterious note sent to the pilot mid flight. ABC's Lama Hassan has the details. The flight was just minutes from landing. That's when out the window some of the 269 passengers saw this a Royal Air Force Typhoon fighter jet responding to an emergency. I turned around and saw the fighter jet outside my window. That was the point where I started shaking. Him. What the passengers didn't know is the pilot radioed in an alarm, 
after being handed a note from a man that an explosive device was on board. The plane heading from Doha, Qatar to Manchester, the fighter jet scrambled to escort the plane in. Once on the ground, armed police swooped in, arresting the passenger who passed the note. It was terrifying, just terrifying all the way through. Uh, you just never think that you'd be in that sort of situation, really. Airlines around the world are on edge. It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still. We saw it in Canada just two weeks ago. A SWAT team storming a flight after a threat was made. Today, in Great Britain, passengers once again shaken up. Fortunately, no suspicious device was found on board the plane, and the passenger who made that bomb threat is still in police custody and being questioned. Lama Hassan, ABC News, Heathrow Airport. A 21-foot boat sinks off the coast of Hawaii, and the rescue is caught on video. Four adults and four children clung to the kayaks they brought for the trip from Molokai to Oahu. It was all captured on this GoPro camera. They were able to call 911 for help. A short time later, a Coast Guard rescue chopper pulled all eight to safety. An animal control confiscates a monkey after it bites a woman outside a restaurant in Beaumont. Animal Control and Fish and Wildlife Wardens took the monkey and two others into custody today. The Cherry Valley woman who owns the monkeys does not have a permit for the animals. She has not been charged with a crime. The woman who was bitten got medical treatment at a hospital. Hmm. Well, let's switch gears and let's talk about that uh, rain event on Sunday was actually very big. I just uh, was getting some information down the National Weather Service telling us that was in Mount Baldy, four inches of rain in one hour was a 500 or near 500 year rain event. Wow. That is incredible. Four sure. inches of rain in one hour, and then they got over four, I think it was four and a half inches of rain in two hours, which is a 75 year rain event. Wow. All that rain's moved up to the north. We're going to look at that in a second. But before we do, I have some moving video. Yeah, good. All right, Kansas farmer, unique way of rounding up his herd of cows. Take a look. <laughs> Pretty good. You get the moving now? Moving? Moving? All right. <laughs> this is uh, Derek Klingenberg playing Lord Song Royals on his trombone. Look at the cows come running. Let me explain this to you. This is how he herds his cattle. He rounds them up. They love the song. It works like a charm. When he plays it, they come running and they even moo to the music. Unbelievable. All right. Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> All right, we are dry today in Southern California, live Megadopolis, 7,000 HD. Look to the north, we see showers and storms, and we even see some lightning occurring in central Nevada, all the way up north into northern portions of California. Are we out of the woods with the rainfall? Well, I'm going to show you in just a second how some of that activity could roll south towards Santa Barbara for tomorrow. The chance is there, right? We'll get to it in a second. Long Beach, beautiful day today. Just a few high clouds out there. The Almanac showing highs today. We're at 82 in downtown. That's below average. Normally we're at 84. So we are on the cool side of things for a few days. And we're going to stay that way, I'd say, until about Friday before temperatures start warming back up above average. LAX looks just fantastic. That's a current shot. 66 right now. And temperatures elsewhere are nice and mild. 77 Temecula, Riverside as well. 73 in Santa Ana and Fullerton. It's a beautiful evening ahead. Let's take a look out in the Pacific first, and then we'll come back local real quick. Hurricane Isel and Tropical Storm Julio both heading toward Hawaii. Hurricane Izel will be knocked down to a tropical storm as it heads toward Hawaii in the next couple of days, and Tropical Storm Julio will be strengthening up to a hurricane by tomorrow. This swell from those storms actually affecting our coastal waters here. We're seeing an uh, increase in those rip currents this week. Keep that in mind if you're heading to the beach. Locally, area low pressure up to the north will start making a uh, trip back to the south just enough. We'll see a little bit of energy spin south, chance of rain in the mountains of Santa Barbara County. Okay, so that's the only chance of rain for tomorrow. Otherwise, everybody's going to be clear, dry, beautiful tomorrow on through the weekend. Beach is 64 overnight, few clouds heading into the coast. Otherwise, fantastic. Tomorrow looks good. Nine in Lancaster, 77,000 Oaks and Inglewood, and right around 90 in the IE. Here's that 74 cast, LA Metro, Orange County, powering it up with active weather tonight. 82 tomorrow. We're below average again Thursday and Friday. There we go. We start warming it up as we head into the weekend here. 80 to 83 between Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday, we warm up into the mid-80s in L.A. Valleys, I.E., you're at 89 by Friday and then into the 90s again by the weekend, so that's where the real heat's going to be for the next few uh, days heading into the seven-day, and the mountains look fantastic. You had a rough one this weekend, the next few days, 74. The chance of rain holds off until next Monday and Tuesday, except again. 
Santa Barbara County tomorrow. Isolated shower possible, otherwise dry. High desert looks good. 95 on Saturday. Back into the triple digits next week. Back to you guys the desk. All right, Jonathan, thank you. You're welcome. In tonight's Hollywood Wrap, get a chance to get nostalgic with the favorite 80s sitcom. And Sherry Shepard's new view from the stage. Plus a big change for a Hollywood landmark. And here's George Finocchi with all the details. This is going to change the architectural la um, landscape of the strip. The famed House of Blues on Sunset Boulevard is looking for a new home. After 20 years as a legendary music destination, the landlord of the building is looking to redevelop the property. Bloomberg reports a new hotel complex will be built in its place. The House of Blues spokesperson says it will be business as usual, though, for the next three years while they search for the right place to relocate. A Facts of Life reunion is in the works. The Paley Center is kicking off its fall preview of many new shows next month, but it's also celebrating the old with a 35th anniversary reunion slated for September 15th. No specifics just yet on which alumni from Eastland Academy will be attending, but hopefully we'll see Joe, Tootie, Natalie, Blair, and Mrs. Garrett all attending. We saw a red carpet reunion last night for director Steven Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey. The longtime friends are co-producers of the new movie, The Hundred Foot Journey. The film held its premiere last night at the Ziegfeld Theater in New York City. Working on this film allowed the two old pals to, the chance to work together for the first time since he directed her in The Color Purple. 30 years. 30 years. Now we'll say it. And looking for... You know, if the right thing comes up, who do you most want to work with? Well, who do you most want to work with? I, I, want to, I want to encourage Oprah to get back into acting because I would love to have take two for me to direct her. Ooh. And, what and I will be so scared this time. I was terrified the whole time. When I was Not the whole time, just to be the first week. I think longer second than that. Week? Yeah, second week too. Helen Mirren stars in The Hundred Foot Journey. It's in theaters on Friday. Sherry Shepard is changing her view and turning evil. The comedian and talk show host is going to make her Broadway debut playing the wicked stepmother in Cinderella. Sherry and the new Cinderella, Kiki Palmer, will begin their Broadway run on September 9th. Finally, the official Scrabble Player's Dictionary is adding some 5,000 new words. It's been 10 years since the last edition, and our world has certainly gotten new words since then. So among them, bromance, hashtag, selfie, chillax, Buzzkill and Frenemy. And my new personal goal to figure out how to use Quiz He on just the right place on the board for a reported 401 points. Wow. Can be done. I'm embarrassed <laughs> I haven't heard of some of those. <laughs> chill, <laughs> chillax. Chillax. It's and like chill out. Qu Quincy. I don't know. Ah. The, the vernacular of today, David. i got to get out there more. <laughs> Thanks, George. Uh, arrest today in the invitation of drugs, uh, drug use in Major League Baseball. Plus, vandals to the local Little League field. Find out who officials suspect of the crime. Carmageddon, Ram Jam, and Century Crunch now get ready for a cajon crawl. <laughs> what you need to know.
The former owner of a clinic linked to steroids and Major League Baseball has agreed to plead guilty to a federal charge. Tony Bosch was among seven people arrested today, all with ties to Biogenesis, the clinic owned by Bosch, which allegedly provided steroids to pro and high school athletes. Last year, Major League Baseball, which was not part of this investigation, suspended several players tied to Biogenesis. Following his arrest, Bosch entered a not guilty plea, but his lawyer says he will eventually plead guilty to distributing steroids. Two people are being questioned about vandalism and thefts at the Little League field in West Los Angeles. The Culver Marina Little League says it's happened multiple times. People breaking into the field, stealing supplies, spray painting satanic messages on the walls. League officials say drug paraphernalia has also been found left in the dugout. They suspect people from nearby homeless encampments. Several people came out here and they take all of our stuff from our, our Little League fields and they build a camp out here. And what we found out here were a refrigerator, freezer, a, a ton of our equipment that they'd stolen and taken out here. Police have questioned several people, but no arrests have been made. Up next, the LAPD chief fires back harsh words from Charlie Beck as he responds to critics over allegations of favoritism and this. I hereby resign the office of President of the United States. Forty years after President Nixon resigned, we're hearing what he went through before making that historic decision. Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News on LA56. Here's what's making headlines at 8.30. Dramatic pictures after a home explodes in Port Washington, New York. One person was killed, and the cause of this blast is under investigation. 
A U.S. general with ties to USC has been killed in a so-called insider attack in Afghanistan. Major General Harold Green is the highest-ranking American officer killed in combat since 1970. The search is on for a robber who pretends he is a blind veteran. That's not all. He also pulls a gun and is considered dangerous. His latest crime was caught on camera. Good evening, I'm David Ono. And I'm Colleen Sullivan. Welcome back to ABC7 Eyewitness News on LA56. Another big story tonight, LA Police Chief Charlie Beck responds to the critics who accuse him of favoritism. Eyewitness News reporter Robert Olguin tells us there is a lot riding on the outcome, his future as chief. The Los Angeles Police Commission will decide next week whether or not Charlie Beck should serve another five-year term as chief of the LAPD. The panel's decision comes as it investigates allegations of favoritism regarding the chief's daughter, who's also an LAPD officer. I'm just very sorry that so much has been put out that is so false. After today's meeting, Beck spoke out about recent allegations that he played a role in minimizing the disciplinary actions taken against an LAPD sergeant who was allegedly romantically involved with Beck's daughter. I absolutely did not influence that case. Beck also addressed the commission's investigation into whether or not there was a conflict of interest when the department acquired a horse owned by Beck's daughter. The Los Angeles Police Foundation purchased the horse from Beck's daughter for $6,000. This is a common occurrence. You know, there are only so many ways you can purchase animals, and when they meet all the criteria, which this horse did, when they pass the 30-day uh, inspection period, which this, this horse did, then they're available for purchase. We need a change. We need a new chief. David Nunez is a veteran LAPD detective who spoke out against the chief at today's meeting. The rules don't apply to them. They only apply to the rank and file. Sergeant Kathy Marks works for the LAPD's Internal Affairs Division. The system is broken, and in my opinion, we need civilian oversight to stop the cronyism, nepotism, and favoritism that's going on. The police commission says it will investigate all the allegations thoroughly, but so far has found no reason not to renew Beck's tenure. My investigators, who are not part of the department, will conduct the investigation and then provide our analysis and our report to the commission for their view so they can evaluate the chief. The police commission will vote on August 12th as to whether they will renew Chief Charlie Beck's contract. Reporting from LAPD headquarters in downtown LA, Robert Olguin, ABC7 Eyewitness News. An autopsy is planned on a young woman who died after attending an electronic music festival at the Whittier Narrows Recreation Area. Investigators say 19-year-old Emily Tran died at an El Monte hospital where she was taken after attending the Hard Summer Festival. The coroner says her death is being treated as a possible drug overdose. As hospital officials reported, the woman had ingested methamphetamine. Final autopsy results could take weeks. The federal funds used to pay for fighting wildfires is drying up. The U.S. Forest Service says it will soon be tapping into programs designed to prevent wildfires in order to pay for fighting them the rest of the year. Roughly 30 fires are currently burning through federal and state forests in California, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Light rain and increased humidity are helping crews make progress fighting the two large fires in Northern California. Get ready for a major closure on the I-15 and the Cajon Pass starting this Friday. For three weekends in August and two in September, northbound lanes between Highway 138 and Oak Hill Road will be closed. Lanes will be reduced from four to two for approximately one mile each weekend. During off-peak hours, three lanes will be closed. Drivers can expect significant delays for northbound traffic during the 55-hour Cajon Crawl. We definitely recommend using uh, carpool, vanpool, uh, traveling at off-peak hours. The closures will take place the weekends of August 8th, 15th, and 22nd. Also, September 5th and 12th, drivers are encouraged to use alternate routes and leave plenty of time to get to your destination. President Richard Nixon's fall from grace, as he's described it nearly a decade after his resignation. It's part of a private videotaped interview now released after all these years. Eyewitness News reporter Rudabe Shabazi has the highlights. The first and only president to resign from office, Richard Nixon recalls learning that the infamous tape that became known as the smoking gun had been released, revealing he had been aware of the break-in at Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate building, despite his repeated denials. This was the final blow, the final nail in the coffin, although you don't need another nail if you're already in the coffin, which we were. On the afternoon of August 6th, 
The disgraced president met with his chief of staff, General Alexander Haig. I said, well, Al, I really screwed it up, didn't I? He didn't have to answer. But Nixon said he never wanted to resign. Resigning now was the option I didn't want to do above everything else personally. Uh, I'm a fighter. Uh, I just didn't want to quit. Uh, also, I thought it would be an admission of guilt, which, of course, it was. Uh, and also, uh, I felt uh, that it would set a terribly bad precedent for the future. Nixon talked about writing and delivering his speech announcing his resignation. He said he sweated through his suit and was left with a chill. Well, soon the chill went away, and I went down to the Lincoln Room and made a few calls to people, uh, heard the chanting outside, uh, reminded me of the Vietnam days, except this time the chant was jail to the chief, jail to the chief. Didn't bother me, however. You know, after all, I'd been heckled by experts. Former White House aide Frank Gannon conducted the interview. Like him or not, whether you think that his resignation was a tragedy for the nation or that he got out of town one step ahead of the sheriff, uh, he was a human being. Ruta Bay Shabazi, ABC7 Eyewitness News. In honor of National Work Like a Dog Day, the Los Angeles International Airport decided to recognize the occasion by showing off the hardest working employees around. These guys meet the canine units whose inner grit and determination help support the thousands of passengers who pass through the airport every day. The dogs work with the airport police, the DEA, Customs and Border Control, and the TSA to keep you safe. Most recently, our canine teams were actually in, played a critical role in our um, incidents last November, the active shooter. Not only did they protect and inspect every terminal so they can allow us to open back the terminals and make sure they're safe, but they also offered um, comforting to the passengers during this very stressful incident. Each team of dogs has their own purpose, like the PUP program, a group specifically designed to put passengers at ease, while other groups focus on safety. In the meantime, a husky missing for two years was reunited with her owner today in Fontana, all thanks to a microchip. Photojournalist Tim Danson was there for the reunion, and he talked to the dog's very happy owner. It's amazing. I mean, we have a family member back. She's She's a part of our family. She's a family member that we love and we care for. I have a 100% unconditional love. I'm sure a lot of other dog owners would agree with me. Their, their dogs are part of their family. Not even dogs, just pets for that matter. Their pets are a part of their family. Just the sweetest little girl you could possibly ever have. Loves to cuddle and loves belly rubs. It's just that microchip saved our little storm so I mean if it's within your power within your within your circumstances you have the time you have the money go do it you can't you're not gonna lose anything if there's you have nothing to lose it's just an extra insurance I guess you could call it if you will for your pet for your pet safety it saved her for us and it could do the same for so many others and I'm sure it has already yeah I get to see her face poking through our little window over there when I'm up in the morning coming upstairs getting ready for school I see her little face looking right at me in the morning and I get to go out there and I get to throw the ball around with her I get to take her on walks now it's great it's great very lucky to be reunited with yeah, the dog. beautiful dog yeah, yeah. Well, still to come, how would you like to boost your metabolism and lose some weight while you sleep? All right, sign up. New research says it is possible. Find out how and what it could mean for your health. I'm meteorologist Jonathan Novak. Beautiful and big bear today. That's the time lapse from earlier on. Temperatures are going to change, though. Some shifts in the forecast ahead in your seven days. Take care.
A startling trend emerges in, in this new study about the homeless population of Los Angeles. According to the Downtown Women's Action Coalition, more women are staying on Skid Row, and those women are older than before. The group says the average age of women living on the streets is between 51 and 61 years old, and she is in desperate need of access to aging-related services. The city just announced a new plan to invest nearly $4 million into helping those living on Skid Row. The move will include an intense street cleaning every every other month and total access to social service programs for those in need. Wouldn't it be a dream to lose weight while you sleep? While some diets claim to help you do that, researchers say it may not be all about food. How specialist Denise Tidore reports and a little known trick to boost your metabolism as you sleep that's now backed by science. You never know what the scale will tell you. I uh, had ups and downs. Daniel Bustamante knows he has to keep an eye on his weight. It just fluctuates uh, quite a bit, you know. He watches what he eats and exercises, but like many people, he wishes it wasn't so hard. So a new study that suggests you can help your body be more efficient while you sleep is appealing. I'd love that study because uh, it's pretty easy to do and I enjoy sleeping. Experts from the U.S. National Institutes of Health asked healthy male volunteers to sleep in climate-controlled bedrooms for four months. Scientists used PET scans to track the men's metabolisms. They found when the participants slept in a 66-degree room, something cool happened. They burned more calories. They noticed that their brown adipose tissue became more activated. Brown fat is sometimes referred to as the good fat because it's metabolically active. It's been shown to take sugar out of the bloodstream to burn calories in order to keep your core temperature constant. When people were placed in a colder environment, they were able to burn their, what they ate faster. Internal medicine specialist Dr. Raul Dewan says while the study was well structured and interesting, it was small. He also adds sleeping in a cold room isn't enough to help you shed pounds if that's the only change you make. But he says it couldn't hurt. So might as well sleep in cold temperature because there's really no risk of sleeping in cold temperature. Daniel might end up using more blankets, but he's willing to give it a try. I think everybody could uh, just turn down the heat a little bit and uh, you know get ready for the get ready for the beach. If only it really was that easy. In Boyle Heights, Denise Sador, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Hmm. Okay, an excuse to turn up the air conditioner. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Okay, well, will we see more sunny skies in the days ahead? Jonathan has his complete forecast up next. And a woman arrested after crashing her car with a python wrapped around her neck, and you won't believe how it got there. But first, do you have a question for L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti? Log on at abc7.com slash newsmakers, then click on Submit Your Question. He could answer it this Sunday on Eyewitness Newsmakers.
A 22-year-old New York woman is in trouble after crashing her car into a fire station and having a stolen python wrapped around her neck. Police say she was under the influence of alcohol and marijuana when she crashed, and the python was stolen from a nearby pet store. Authorities arrested her on suspicion of DUI, among other charges. The python was not injured. Well, this is uh, something way more cool. A young seal crashing the surf session of two surfers off the coast of northeast England had climbed wow. onto oh. their boards trying to balance. And one of the surfers oh. told the BBC the seal hung out with them for nearly an hour. He must have loved it. I mean, an hour this wild animal just hung out with him. And also called it a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I bet it was. What a cute yeah. little guy. So sweet. Oh, I would have loved that. That would have been a highlight yeah. for me. Seriously, it's like, a, like, a, like a puppy of the sea <laughs> just hanging out with you. Come looks better than I do. Oh, <laughs> I did a good times. job. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about the weather that we had over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Now it's affecting other parts. That system's moved up into portions of Nevada, Utah, a neighborhood. Actually, we're going to show you right now in Salt Lake, North Salt Lake. Actually, was evacuated. In Utah, a landslide destroyed one home in that neighborhood. It's threatening more than 20 others. No one was injured here, but again, this is in North Salt Lake. Neighbors say they noticed the earth moving on the hill last week, and then all this rain moving through caused that house just to give way, and rain still going on there, as we see on that live Megan 7000 HD. This is the system that we had over the weekend. And now let's move all the way to the north, and we're going to talk about how there is a chance for a little bit of energy to rotate back toward us for tomorrow in just a second. But look at that. The rain's still off in portions right around Salt Lake City and off to the west, stretching all the way to northern portions of northern California. So a lot of deep moisture there just continuing to pump out showers and storms. For us, fantastic. This is a time lapse from earlier today in downtown. How about it? Just a few clouds. Can't beat that. Temperatures below average. Beautiful. Hollywood was 86. Riverside was only 94. Again, temperatures below the norms. And we're going to be there again tomorrow, temperature-wise. And right now, it is clear in Long Beach. You guys didn't have a cloud today. It was actually really nice. 69. The light winds, well, it's a little bit of a breeze, actually. 10 to 15 has been kicking up. That's about as much as you're going to get this evening. With other numbers around the area, it is, uh, it's weather you can't beat. 64 in Oxnard and Santa Barbara, 73 in Burbank, 66 in Santa Monica. This is that system I was telling you about all the way up to the north of us. And as it continues to drift to the east, it's going to start taking a little bit of a southern track over the next day. What does that mean for us? I'm going to show you right here in that future scan. Watch this red area and the yellow right here in the future scan. This is energy associated with that system. A little bit of, bit of it drifts to the south tomorrow and into the northern portions of our area. Check that out Wednesday at 9 p.m. So the afternoon and evening tomorrow, we could see a little bit of energy into the Santa Barbara County mountains, and that could provide a shower or two. Chances low, but it's there. What about the rest of us? It's going to stay dry. It's going to stay beautiful. Rain chances hold off area-wide until next week, all right? So enjoy the weather while we've got it. it looks beautiful. Late-night clouds, beaches 64, high desert 65. Amazing tomorrow. 90 in Lancaster, 90 in Santa Clarita, 82 in Los Angeles, below average, 84 Covina, and 90 in the IE, 82 Anaheim. Good stuff, 70 forecast for LA Metro and Orange County. We are below those norms, very unseasonably cool, if you will. We'll say warm, I'd say, in, in LA at least. 82 down to 80, 80, 80, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Back up to average by Sunday into Monday and above average next Tuesday. But no rain in L.A. for the next seven days. Valleys, i.e., no rain for you guys either in the 80s for the valleys, Wednesday and Thursday, even into Friday. Not back in the 90s until the weekend. You're getting kind of hot next Tuesday, all right, as we see high pressure building back in. The mountains, all right, different story. We're going to keep you nice and mild for the next few days, 74. The rain chances come back into play Monday and Tuesday with more of that monsoonal flow into the area for the mountains. Until then, though, you're going to stay dry. No showers or storms in the forecast, except again up in the Santa Barbara County Mountains, possibly tomorrow. High desert looks good, too. Slight chance of rain next Tuesday. Dallas has more in the forecast, ABC 7 at 11. Thank you, Jonathan. You're welcome. Michael Phelps has been at the top of the swimming world, and after 22 Olympic medals, Phelps retired. But less than two years later, he's on a comeback trail, and Kurt Sandoval caught up with him in Irvine for tomorrow's start of the U.S. Nationals. The most decorated Olympic swimmer never thought he'd be back at Nationals in Irvine. I mean, there are always things that I still want to do and still want to achieve, and, and um, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm still here. After Phelps won six of his record 22 Olympic medals in London, he dove straight into retirement. What it appears now is he simply needed a break. How much you two kept in touch uh, during Michael's break? and was Actually, it? more than we did when he was swimming. Is that right? Yeah, I would send a text, he'd actually respond. To be able to come to work out and, and, and not have Bob, you know, sort of 
I've said it before, like pulling teeth and pulling hair, you know, and trying to get me into the water. When Phelps came out of retirement, he said he was 30 pounds heavier than he is now. He admitted part of the reason he came back, he was bored in retirement, and he has unfinished business. But it's this national championship in Irvine that will determine if he pursues some of those goals. When he first came to me, I was like, what is going on? There's no way you should do this, right? Because he was so unhappy going into London. And uh, I haven't seen any of that now, so it's good. It's fun. You know, it, it, it is enjoyable for me to be able to be back in the water and, and to be able to race um, at this level again. He's brought so much publicity, so much attention to how amazing this sport is and how much it's taught everyone. And just having him on deck, the experience that he brings is just incredible. And he wants to get back to incredible in the pool. Kurt Sandoval, ABC7 Eyewitness News. And the U.S. Swimming Nationals begin tomorrow and will run through Sunday. A Santa Paula Reserve police officer who resigned over a controversial video she posted on YouTube now has another video. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Suter spoke with her this afternoon. There's a lot of motorists out there, myself included, that are so ignorant to the real issue out there. And there is. There's a huge, huge war between cyclists and motorists. Like Former Reserve Santa Paula police officer Laura Weintraub learned about the dangerous battle after igniting a firestorm of backlash, even death threats. Nice Buddy. With a controversial video blog she posted online. I hate bicyclists. Every single one of them. In the video, she joked about running down cyclists. Weintraub says, like many of her other cup holder commentary videos, it was meant as a satire. It, it was one of those things I hear a lot of people talk about bikes and how much they can't stand bikes on the road. And I thought, oh, it seems to be a hot topic. I'll just make light of it. And by making light of it, it was, it, it was a disaster. The video went viral, Weintraub was put on leave, and ultimately resigned her post with the police department. She says it ended up being a life-changing lesson, one she has now posted online. I had my wake-up call, and perhaps my mistake can help to bridge the gap and bring greater awareness to both motorists and cyclists alike. In her latest blog, she meets with several cycling experts and hits the road to see what it's like to be on the other side. Seriously, like he couldn't wait? Heavy traffic and close calls, an eye-opening experience, one she wants to share. My eyes were opened, and I hope to open others' eyes as well. Weintraub says she misses being a volunteer officer and doesn't know what the future holds for being on the force, but she does know sharing the road isn't a laughing matter. In Santa Paula, Leanne Suter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. And more news straight ahead here at 8 o'clock and ahead tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 on KBC. He was just five minutes from home but never made it. His loved ones found him like this in a hospital bed tonight to search for his killer. The Step Up franchise steps up for a new musical adventure. This one takes the truth of talented dancers to Las Vegas. And these stories and all the late-breaking news on Southern California's number one newscast, Eyewitness News at 11 on KBC.
We seem to have bacon everything nowadays, but this is definitely a first. A bacon-powered motorcycle taking its inaugural cross-country road trip. The bike was built for Hormel and is featured in the documentary called Driven by Bacon. The project follows the bike and its rider traveling from Minnesota to California to talk to complete strangers about their greatest passions. The whole goal is to really find people that are to the core about something. We're obviously bacon to the core, but finding people that have passion or have something that they really believe in. Hormel is supplying the bacon grease for the fuel. The cost about three and a half dollars per gallon and get 75 to 100 miles to the gallon. It makes you hungry the whole way, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it probably does. Just yeah. <laughs> We're all driven by bacon. Thanks for joining us right with the news at 8 o'clock here in LA 56 Law and Order SCU is next. And Eyewitness News continues at 11 p.m. on ABC7 and anytime on ABC7.com. Have a good evening. Bye.